So, uh, when we prepared for this presentation together with my team, my boss, and he's also known in this uh, community as Alexei Shurko, so he dreamfully closed his eyes and said, remember our transport telematics field 10 or even 15 years ago, when there were no competitors, it was unsaturated market, plenty of projects, so I did what my boss told me to do, I dreamfully closed my eyes, but I figured out that 10 years ago I was an undergraduate student, so I cannot remember our transport telematics field 10 years ago. Uh, so maybe some of you started their business 10 years ago. It was 2012, I believe. Uh, do we have some partners here who started their business uh, 10 years ago? Uh, we, yeah, we, ha we have some. Uh, is, it, is that true what Alexei told me? I mean, was the grass really greener by that time? Uh, or did you struggle with <laughs> entering this business? <laughs> well, actually, I tried to stress him to see if he lies to me, but okay, maybe he, uh, he doesn't lie to me and he had no <laughs> competitors by this time. But it's, it's not just a curiosity question. Uh, there is a well-known idea that uh, uh, new emerging markets have more opportunities for those who created it or entered it on early stages. Uh, right? But we cannot call our transport telematics field emerging. In fact, it's pretty mature and stabilized. Uh, so, uh, this is a diagram that uh, contains IoT market segmentation from the resource called statista.com. Um, they provide big companies and not only big companies with some insights about the market. So, uh, as my colleagues yesterday presented, 83% of the units in Vialon are uh, either cargo transports or passenger transport. So we may roughly say that most of our Vialon projects here are aimed for transportation and mobility segment. Uh, good news is this is the second largest uh, segment, uh, which basically uh, confirms my words about that our sphere is pretty major. But it's still only 15%, so of the whole broader IoT space. And there is another research by the same Statista that in terms of money, IoT market doubles each two, three years. So the part of this growth is our natural growth, so we gain more customers. But the part of this uh, growth are new emerging niches. And the main idea I want to push for you today is that your experience in transport telematics can be applied to enter this new niches. Uh, and what do I mean by experience? Uh, in general, if we talk about the term Internet of Things, like uh, it it's consists of two words, obviously. <laughs> the first is Internet, it's something like informational technologies, uh, clouds, Vialon, it's all there, and, and the things, which, which is closer to, to the ground, to, 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 to the real world, uh, and here all the GPS tracker sleeves in, in our terms, like you connect GPS trackers to things, obtain some telemetry of it and manage it somehow remotely. So I really want to emphasize the difference between uh, this uh, experience in internet with your experience in Vialon and things. Uh, and that's why, because if we split it, we can place something in the middle, in between. So when I think of FlashP and Vialon and IoT devices, uh, I picture it like this beautiful tree where uh, the roots are our reliable uh, various IoT hardware. Uh, they are holding the ground and close to, to the, all the dirty work when you need to uh, throw some wires. And FlashP is a stable trunk uh, which converts and consumes all the raw inputs from, from the roots and provides a stable base for the branches. And branches, they look in different directions. Uh, the biggest branch is obviously Velon, but there are many others. And what's more, branches hold all the leaves. Uh, so, what I want to also emphasize is that even though the GPS trackers are designed to be installed in vehicles, uh, it doesn't mean that you cannot put it into the fridge or hand it under the ceiling to collect some sensors from 
from some static area. And on the contrary, they are designed to work in this all the shaky environment with the wide temperature range in the middle of nowhere with the no coverage of signal. So they, they're pretty good. They're already pretty good. They're highly configurable. And this, is, this might be advantage in entering these new niches. So we tried with my team take some several adjacent to transportation spheres and brainstorm how the above mentioned experience can be uh, leveraged. So uh, let's take energy. So uh, many speakers before me told about the fuel economy, but that's because it's all relates to transport. But what kind of energy can we uh, save more? Uh, you all aware, yeah, this, since this all the crisis about the war started, uh, the prices for energy, not only for the fuel, but gas, electricity, rise significantly. It's 50, 60 percent, 80 percent, like Valit mentioned. And the same idea by uh, uh, idea by the same Alexei Shurko is that Vialon was always on the rise in, ter in times of crisis, when the old business schemes becomes not so profitable, it's, it, and it becomes more sense to optimize. Uh, processes to save fuel and so on. So uh, let's take some narrow niche about the cold chain uh, energy conservation. Uh, in general, when we speak about cold chain, it's usually the idea of that the temperature should not go too high, uh, so uh, the food uh, will not spoil or the pharmaceuticals will not spoil. But shifting this idea for the temperature not to go too low actually makes sense too. Because, like, uh, the simple uh, play with the digits, standard temperature for the freezers in the retail is minus 17 degrees Celsius, and such a fridge uh, in usual consumes one kilowatt hour of energy per day. And, but lowering down this temperature only by three, four degrees doubles this energy consumption. So, just shifting the idea about the cold chain, we enter the new niche. And... Uh, What's more, the primary task might be pretty boring. Like when you say, I bring you fresh milk, nobody cares because the milk has to be fresh. It will, will be used to be. But when you sell it like, let's save energy or let's save planet, what's more, <laughs> it may bring you more, uh, more customer, more interest from potential customers. Uh, and for example, if it's something that cannot be spoiled, like for example, drinks, uh, you may keep it cold uh, in the morning when people pass by and uh, keep the temperature higher at night. And you can compete with the vendors that create special computers with interface like buttons uh, and embedded computers, like providing thin interface to the fridge and schedule commands uh, that you already know how to do from VLON. So it might be not obvious solution to use GPS tracker in the fridge that stands alone, <laughs> but if you can make it fast, if you can make it profitable, uh, why not? It's a new niche that you can uh, take. Uh, next next uh, thing just to brainstorm about is agriculture. So in this segmentation it has only 4%, but uh, I think it's undeserveably. Uh, I think it sh this, this niche should grow more. Uh, some of you may already be providing uh, some tracking and monitoring services in agriculture uh, by tracking uh, tractors, planters, harvesters, mosters, uh, maybe bundling with hectare to optimize field cultivation. But what is more, uh, what is also important in the, the successful agriculture operation is to control for the soil moisture. Uh, how much water is it in the ground? So, especially now when even Europe suffers from droughts, uh, and knowing the level of moisture uh, uh, generates profits, so you uh, water the plants before they show the signs of distress, so it turns out in higher yields, uh, and it reduces costs, so you do not water the fields that do not require extra watering. And uh, under this QR code, you may read a BBC article about uh, the coffee company from Brazil that fights back coffee yields by investing 10% of their revenue into the high tax solution. Like 10% uh, of revenue. It's like uh, if, if there is a taxi company that operated by, by, by Vialon, each 10th ride, 
the price for each tenth right goes directly to Vialon. I think Alexander Kushinov won't re reject such an offer. Uh, maybe he should think about new pricing details about this. But 10% of revenue, and this, this solution requires, uh, they build some custom moisture sensors, and they analyze satellite uh, images to detect the region that require extra watering. So, uh, if the agriculture vehicle already equipped with GPS tracker that has Bluetooth capabilities, uh, we may deploy the fields with the uh, low-cost Bluetooth moisture, ground moisture sensors. And when the tractor passes by, it doesn't uh, only get the crops, but also gets the data. Uh, this is sound a bit even cyberpunkly when uh, the tractors harvest the data. But still, uh, I, I think that the, the custom solution might be pretty overpriced, but you have all the knowledge how to uh, enter this market in a new niche. And what Flespi can do, it can split the data from each sensor and provide it with, with a single unit on Vialon, for example. So you may have a unit type in Vialon, a part of the field. Uh, not just track, but part of the field. And you already have all the knowledge how to do this. Uh, and this is a pretty powerful idea that each sensor can be treated separately. Uh, just let, let's think about next niche, which is like cities and waste management. Each trash bin is equipped with BLE beacon and garbage, can, uh, garbage truck is equipped with mm, GPS tracker. So it's passed data from trash bins that, that it carries uh, around or just passes around to, to the VLON and you can track each container. The same idea, narrow niche, you have all the experience to enter it. Uh, and as we talk about BLE beacons, let's talk more about BLE beacons, the, the segment about the buildings. Uh, Flespi already can you provide you with the solution to uh, work with uh, indoor monitoring. And uh, the first thing that comes to my mind is w uh, forklift in the warehouse. Uh, you, some, of, some of you may be uh, providing tracking services for forklifts, and it works well with it when it's outside, but as soon as it gets into the warehouse, GPS signal cannot get there, so uh, you, you, you don't uh, have an ability to know the position. But Flespi provides with a single, single technology that you have BLE beacons, and you uh, hang it around all the whole warehouses, register it in Flespi, hard code coordinates, precise coordinates uh, for the each backend, and once the GPS tracker drives in, it has no GPS signal, it reports which beacons it sees around, and Flespi just appends coordinates. So in VLON, you see pretty forklift that works as well as outside, as well as inside. Uh, really straightforward application. We can discuss it later if somebody is interested in it. So uh, let's get back to this visual. Uh, Flespi uh, is not only a stable backend, it can normalize data, cut off some data, append some data, split data from different devices, or vice versa, merge data from different devices, and push it to VLON, which is the core of your uh, services. But besides VLON, you can have various focused vertical applications, like I described uh, earlier. Uh, So this is final slide, just to make uh, speak about contrast between VLON and Flespi. So when I think of VLON, it's some stuff that's ready to be used. You just connect the tracker and you get things done because it's, it's ready to use platform. You can just sell it to your customer. However, if you place Flespi in the data flow between devices and VLON, uh, you enable a great degree of flexibility in your business. Uh, Flespi becomes a data hub. It has integrations and pretty API. It can do various types of data transformations. Uh, it has various tools for device management, diagnostics. So it provides some added value and it allows you to build some other branches. And we believe that this is something that help you future-proof your uh, new projects and your business with Vialon. Thank you.